بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویورز اس وقت میں ڈسٹرکٹ ٹوینٹی ایتھ میں ہوں جو ہیولی ڈائیورس کمیونٹی ڈسٹرکٹ ہے ساؤتھ ایشین کے ڈسٹرکٹ ہے جس میں بزنسز ہیں ساؤتھ ایشین کے بہت ہیوج ڈسٹرکٹ ہے اس میں فلشنگ ہے امین سٹریٹ ہے اور جو گرد و نوا کے علاقے ہیں یہاں سے ایشیائی امریکن کمیونٹی کے بہت سے لوگ کھڑے ہیں جو سیکنڈ آف نومبر کو جو مقابلہ ہونے جا رہا ہے سٹی کونسل کی جو سیٹس کے لیے اس میں میئر آف نیو یارک کے لیے بھی کانٹے دار مقابلہ ہوگا سیکنڈ آف نومبر کو جب کہ جو کچھ باروز ہیں جیسے برانکس کا بارو ہے اور دیگر باروز کے پریزیڈنٹس کے لیے بھی یہ مقابلہ ہوگا تو ایک چیز دیکھنے میں آ رہی ہے کہ کچھ سال قبل یہاں پہ ایشیائی امیدواروں کی تعداد اتنی زیادہ نہیں تھی جو الیکشن کانٹیسٹ کرتے تھے یا الیکشن میں پارٹیسپیٹ کرتے تھے مگر پچھلے کچھ سالوں سے ایشیائی امیدواروں کی تعداد بڑھ گئی ہے یہاں تک کہ ایشیائی خواتین کی کہتے ہیں کہ کچھ آنے والے سالوں میں اگر ففٹی ون سیٹس ہیں نیو یارک سٹی کونسل کی تو ففٹی ون سیٹس میں ہی ویمن جو کانٹیسٹ کر رہی ہیں اور وہی ساری تعداد ویمنس کی ہوگی کچھ سالوں بعد تو ہمارے ساتھ ایک آنریبل ہمارے ساتھ خاتون ہیں کمبوڈین ریز اینڈ بورن ہے اور تائیوانس ہیں چائنیز امیرکن ہیں لائر ہیں اور کمیونٹی ایڈوکیٹ ہیں مس سانڈرا ان سے بات کرتے ہیں ویلکم ٹو گلوبل ٹی وی اینڈ دنیا انٹرنیشنل نیوز پیپر سانڈرا ان یو آر آر کمیونٹی ایڈوکیٹ اینڈ یو آر رننگ فار دس ویری ٹرکی سیٹ آف ڈسٹرکٹس ٹوینٹی ایتھ وچ از ہیولی ڈائیورس ویری ڈائیورس یو ہیو ڈفرینٹ کمیونٹیز لائک پاکستانی امیرکن چائنیز امیرکن تائیونیز امیرکن So why you jump in this race uh, and can you tell us about yourself? Sure. So um, thank you for having me on uh, today. Um, I uh, was born in Cambodia. Uh, my family and I escaped the genocide from Cambodia. So we eventually made it to New York when I was seven. And I came to Flushing, um, where I'm running now, when I was 10 years old. I attended all the public schools in Flushing. I went to PS22, Junior High School 189, and Flushing High School. And then I did graduate from Columbia Law School. After Columbia Law School, I worked with victims of domestic violence. And around 2005, I started working um, in um, the government uh, sector. I worked for former Assemblyman Jimmy Mang. I have worked for New York City controllers John Liu and uh, Bill Thompson who ran for mayor in the past, and for the last 10 years, since the Congresswoman has been elected into Congress, I have been working for the Congresswoman. I'm running simply as I'm the person. I came from this district. I'm still here. My parents are still here. My parents actually live right next to me. So I'm in a unique position to understand this district. Moreover, I will use my experience, my expertise, to advocate for District 20. Your di district is heavily populated it's, it's, uh, with these Asian American and it's a business district. You know, the people in your districts are really affected by the COVID-19 during this pandemic. So if you will be elected in, on November 2nd, how you will help these people who are really affected by this COVID pandemic? So the small business, um, as you said, um, there's a lot of small business in District 20, all from diverse backgrounds. Um, small business is often the way when the immigrant uh, community comes to the United States, um, it's the way they support themselves and their family. Small business hasn't been treated fairly before COVID. It definitely has not been treated fairly after COVID. My plan is, you know, you know, I want people to see as the city government as being helpful to small business. So first, not to find small business when there are small violations. Um, I know a lot of spawners try to really work hard to comply with the rules and regulations, but sometimes, because of the immigrant family, they don't know how to comply with the rules and regulations. So it's very important that the city government reaches out, and before we find them, um, we should try to help them to be in compliance before finding them. And moreover, I, during my primary, which I won the Democratic primary, I also suggested that we should have a city agency right here in District 20 in Flushing. Um, it is the last line for the seven train. Also, a lot of buses come through Flushing, Queens. And right now, if somebody has a problem with any city agency services, they can, there's nothing they could find in Flushing. They either have to go to Jamaica or Long Island City 
HR is one example. I think that we need to have a city agency service that's right here in Flushing, and it should include a small business service center. So when a small business has issues, um, they could just go right to that center and talk to somebody, and somebody there should be able to speak the languages of the community. Like you said, Flushing is a very diverse community. I'm very fortunate to have um, diversity on my team because um, it is very important that I do reach out to all the diverse community, as you said, that we have here. Um, Chinese Americans, Korean Americans, um, South Asian Americans. And that way, I will continue to do that. Um, I think with any campaign, there are challenges. But I, again, think I really do have the experience and the expertise um, to get through this tough campaign. And hopefully, with the help of everybody, I will want to be elected on November 2nd. Well, people of New York uh, are facing a lot of challenges, uh, challenge of uh, you know affordable housing. There are after you know during this pandemic a lot of people lose their jobs and uh, there are other issues like homelessness issues how you will address these uh, how you foresee or address these issues when you'll be elected in this post I think one of the most important things is to understand, um, you know, there will be 51 city council members that will be elected. I hope to be one of them, like the issues you just point out, the homeless issue, the mental health challenges that many families face. It's an issue not only this community is facing, it's an issue that the entire New York City is facing. And I do look forward to working together with the other city council members, because they also have this issue in this district, along with the mayor. Uh, who, hopefully, I think it's Eric Adams, that we'll be working together to tackle these issues. You know, it's Asian hate crimes, you know, it's something which, it's, you know, ever since COVID happened, it's been on the rise. And, you know, it is, it's very sad to me as someone who lived in this community that I have friends and family telling us, telling me that, you know, their, you know, their fathers, mothers are afraid to walk outside. Um, they don't want their seniors to walk outside. Look, we have to tackle this for a lot of different ways. We really do have to work with our local community uh, police precinct to make sure, you know, they are aware of this issue. They could help us. We have to make sure that the police precincts that we do have is as diverse as the community, um, not just on the like, ground level, but also on the supervisory level. And also, our district attorney's offices, it's also very important to have diversity on that level, too. And I really am pushing for, and I want to have a hotline, a Asian American hate uh, crime hotline, that actually will be able to speak the languages, the different languages of the community. But I think it's so important when you do face a potential hate crime or even a racial like a racial slur you have to report that it's so important that we do we have the right numbers uh, saying like what why is it what like the rise right and moreover education is so key um, I think part of the reason why Asian hate crimes um, is on the rise it's because people don't see us they see us outsiders they don't see us as Americans. And no matter how long we have been here, how much we have contributed to the um, United States, people will always see us as a perpetual outsiders. And this, you got to root this out at the start. You got to root this out at the education level. On the education level, we start to have classes which teaches us what makes the United States great is the contributions of all the immigrants. That's what makes the United States great. And so I think we got to tackle this on all fronts. You know, um, this will be the first city council that will have a majority of women. And yes, we actually do have a couple of Asian Americans, um, you know, in this, uh, who will be elected. I think you all know Shahana um, from Brooklyn. We hope the best for Felicia. <laughs> and uh, there will also be uh, Julie Wong and Linda Lee. Um, I really do believe, um, and Shekhar, actually, I'm sorry, my force, Shekhar also is also elected. Uh, not women, but also South Asian. I think it's great um, that we will all be working together to make Make sure everyone understands the issues that's facing Asian American. And also as, as a woman, um, I'm very proud if elected, I will be the first Asian American woman representing this District 20. You serve in different posts, like you serve on a commission, uh, Parks Commission and Recreation. Uh, oh, yes. So how you see the, the condition of parks in New York City and uh, do we need any improvement for these parks or you will 
uh, say something in the city council to improve this park? Absolutely. I do think the COVID uh, made us realize parks is so important to our community, especially to our senior community. Our seniors use the parks that we have a lot, and we have to make sure um, you know they're done well. Like I know I've seen a lot of parks. Sometimes the the the, the, the I'm sorry, the ground is low. It's cracked. It's not level, which is really actually just dangerous. Uh, we have to make sure like parks are safe. I know sometimes many uh, people are afraid to go to a park after a certain time. You know, I'll be definitely be advocating for more funding for um, you know the infrastructure of park and also to make sure we actually have park rangers in the park that's walking around so people do feel safe when they do use the parks. So um, I right now I have the endorsement of the senator. Um, Chuck Schumer and Christian Gillibrand. I do have the endorsement of the Consul Congresswoman Grace Mink, um, the senators, state senators Toby Stavisky, um, and uh, John Liu, and also State Assembly uh, woman um, Neely Rosick, and my, and the current City Council person of this district, Peter Koo. Can you say something about the rank choice voting? Is it uh, good for the New Yorkers, or what do you think as a politician? So I think ranch choice voting gives uh, voters opportunity to vote for more than one person, which I think is great. I do think what um, needs to happen better next time, because it is going to be a part of our New York City voting um, world, is that you know they really have to um, teach people what rank choice voting means, and they have to teach people what rank choice voting means again in the language that they understand, because it's very important. It's voting is our, our, our power. I really do encourage every Asian American to come out and to vote. I know um, they think they sometimes they think, oh, I voted in June. I don't have to vote again. No, you really have to vote again in November. It's very important to come out and vote again in November, and not just in districts where there's Asian Americans running. You have to vote in every district. For example, the mayor's race, I do know in the mayor's race, once it's over, they will see the breakdown of who came out to vote. So they'll see how many Asian Americans vote, how many Latinos voted. And so in order to make our voice known, we have to make sure we have to come out numbers, and this is how we could get our voice across in City Hall. So I do want to add, um, I realized that de Blasio two weeks ago um, had this proposal to eliminate the gifted and talented program. And that's not right. I advocated um, along with I, Linda Lee, um, the other um, primary winner, along with other than the Northeast um, ele Queens elected official, that we have to create opportunities for all our students to be able to get into the gifted and talent program. And the way to do that is not to eliminate them. The way to do that is actually expand them by having them in each of the school districts and each of the schools. Yes, Ms. Sandra, I just want to ask, uh, already all aspects are covered already, but my question is, uh, who do you think that your opponent is and how would you fight? Well, I have a uh, Republican opponent. Um, He's, I mean, you know what? I'm a very um, positive campaigner. I'm right now telling you who I am, reaching out to the voters, telling them why they should vote for me. Um, I would just encourage everybody to come on vote. Early voting starts this Saturday to next Sunday. And if you don't have time um, to do that in early voting, please come on vote November 2nd. Thank you, viewers. You were watching Sandra Ang. Thank you. Unka again, we gave her a lot of precious time. Diya. Asian Americans are very big in the city council election. Mein bhi lad rahi hai, jabke, uh, ye aur khushi ki baat hai ke, in Jesse, Jo Hwatin, Bulk City Council, Miss Martma, Bohada Hwatin, election may jump Karino, or Jessica Manapele Bibata, Art Sekuch Salbad, Agar twenty fifty one seats, hai, City Council Ki, to fifty fifty one seats per Hwatin hi Brajman Hogi, uh, Apne Jo Sati, uh, Senior Journalist uh, James Cyprian, or Host Cameraman Abdul Samad Khan Kasad, um, thank you, Dakarte, Sandra Onka, District Twentieth, say, Jo heavily populated Asian. Thank you very much. Uh, Global TV and Dunya International, Manzhur Hussain, Flushing, New York.